right now I'm drafting a letter to the FCC. I'm going to request a meeting with the powers that be at the FCC. And I'm going to address this in such a way that I'm going to prove that identity can solve one of the biggest problems that is one of the biggest technological core issues of how identity is stolen uh, today in the digital space, and that's SIM swapping. Well, the consent piece that lives today that I'm talking about we're releasing for the brands is proof in the use case that you can control the identity from the starting point in a circle all the way back. So by the time that user gets a, a text or a message or something, you can loop it all back together and you can uh, know that it's a secure message, know it's whatever. Uh, now, if you consider what we can do with this technology and ensure that your SIM swap can't happen, it goes through the same type of notification system that only your identity can send something to you and only your identity knows where to send it. And it may randomize what it sends and where it sends it. Therefore, gotcha. what hacker is ever going to figure out randomized you know, communication across a multi-channel when it's in your control? And you could just go, oh, you know, today I'll just have a setting in there eventually with templates, right? This yeah. is where all your innovators are going to come in, Alan, like Matrix. I can't wait to have Matrix say, we're going to give you encrypted communications over this telephone number that you can also put into your account. Exactly. Right? Into yep. your profile. Yeah. Uh, and what else can you do with it? So uh, essentially, if the carrier gets a request for SIM swap, it still has to get your approval. Yes. It's as simple as that. It's outside. It, so exactly. It's no longer it's, an inside job. Exactly. They, I swear I've been uh, tasked to do is to build the infrastructure, the plumbing, yeah, uh, this interoperable way uh, to manage your your newly found ownership of this digital data that you've been leaving behind for so long, like holes in your pockets and pennies rolling out or dollars or in most cases, a lot more than dollars. Yeah. Or hands in your pocket. Or hands. Well, tr trust me, they're shaking <laughs> your pockets to get the money out fast. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So let's just be real about that. And and that is not uh, facilitated or pulled off by one party. It's an entire ecosystem of participants. And yeah. when you face that kind of challenge, you also face a lot of headwinds. People yeah. don't want to give up money ever yeah. in the corporate world. And I'm not here to stop fraud. I'm here to provide paths that people can trust. And if you can trust it, then you just dismiss all that from it. Yeah. It's education by by protection. Yeah. What starts is uh, you make those who are going to fund it happy, which happens to be brands, okay? So we're working with some uh, some brands that need to use aggregators that need to have uh, communications to customers, right? Yeah. And in that, there's a lot of complexity. It sounds easy, right? Like, hey, I'm just gonna, you know, communicate with the customer. No, 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 no. It depends where the customer is. Are they under a do not call or do not text or yeah. do not this? Is it state level? Is it federal level? Is it county level? Is there some kind of blocking that they're going to do? Did they report a false, false positive? All that bullshit, uh, yeah. pardon my French, but you know, this is where uh, the carriers have a problem too. Yeah. So you have this uh, problem with this consumer getting a bad message. Well, how does a carrier understand where that message came from, mm -hmm. how it's facilitated? Today, the carriers can't, they're big pipes. They don't, they don't see that granular stuff. They need a lot of help. So what do they do? They they depend on uh, the community, being all of us, to mm -hmm. actually swipe right, swipe left, or pour it through the spam reporting device, whatever the heck it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then they react. This is all very slow. Yeah. Uh, so uh, how do you how do you solve for this? If is it really a TCPA violation? To your point, Johnny, is this a you know a czar event? How does he protect his customer if that? And user did opt in for something. Where is that? You know, yeah. is it how difficult is it to produce that? Right. All of these are hair everywhere, everywhere in that communication. So, how do you solve it? Well, 
I want you to have your own identity. So I'm going to I'm going to throw a bone to all the other folks to get that to happen. So basically what the brand is doing is uh, going to use our technology to allow you to fork your information. Well, what does that mean? Well, in this, instead of just clicking through what you're going to click through anyway, oh, I accept everything. Take my kids, take my house, <laughs> whatever. Uh, now I'm going to give you a path that's different because the, the, the brands are having so much trouble managing compliancy with you and managing uh, uh, third party requests like, did you do this wrong? And, you know, all these class action lawsuits yeah. <laughs> that Bazaar and others have to uh, defend businesses from. I'm not here to own your data. I'm here to create plumbing so you can manage your data and you own your data. And it starts with something as simple as an opt in. It's there, like all those use cases you were mentioning, Johnny. Oh, wonderful. I can't wait for people to build upon the infrastructure to solve each and every one of these. Like we're going to be working with some of the uh, innovators you have to plug on uh, innovations yep. onto your identity profile. So here now, just imagine your identity profile as like an empty iPhone or uh, uh, Android, right? Nothing came stock. Whoa. That self-sovereign identity, like, because now you have this digital identity. That's what I'm creating. Mm -hmm. Then we attach things like self-sovereign communications. And that's where it starts with consent. So here, consent is driven by the brand. You manage your consent. It automatically puts a checkbox between your identity profile and the brand's identity profile because they're both identities. Yeah. They both have a place in this community of of, of trusted identities. So, so just to paraphrase, you know, just to help get my head around this, because you use this term several times in terms of claiming an identity, mm -hmm. you claim your identity. Mm -hmm. So what your again, I'm just going to paraphrase, given the words profile and then SSI. So by claiming your identity, your you're claiming your TNID profile, mm -hmm. within that profile, there are, of course, many uh, aspects, one of which mm -hmm. is self-sovereign communications. Mm -hmm. So in there, if you ask, can I, you know, I, I'm, my bank asks that they can communicate with me, and I go, yes, that would then, because they're both part of this ecosystem, the bank's identity, my identity, and the link between them for particular forms of communication are enabled in that profile. So right. 